Naked Drawing in the Do It Yourself Film Animation Show. Starring your old friend Hiram H.B., Erasmus Eraser, and Freddie F. A. Thrill as they chase the elusive muse, Irene Inspiration. Will they ever catch her? Will you ever catch her? Watch this episode and learn something to your advantage. Now, the only way that Alex Cassie could possibly make that piece of animated film is by using the registration peg bar to register his drawings accurately one on top of the other. Now, there's a little more work involved in this method, so why bother? Basically, anima peg bar animation is as simple as as if drawing in a flip book in your school exercise book, drawing in the corners of the pages and flipping the pages. What one has is the spine of the book, which is acting as the registration peg bar, if you like, mm -hmm. and then you flip the pages to watch the drawings move. This is done by a nine-year-old boy, Jonathan Dean, and this is, this is it. This is how animation works. So we got Jonathan to draw on larger paper, on so-called professional size paper. Mm -hmm. He's 10 years old now, so he's getting a little too sophisticated here. He's getting too good. And this is a part of a film or some of his tests, which he shoots weekly. And it's the same principle exactly. Now, each one of these paper drawings is shot on film. I should say that this, um, this method is for anybody who loves to draw, or who loves to do lots of drawings, Jonathan just rips them out, and you have to be prolific, and you have to love drawing. But if a 10-year-old boy can do this, and it doesn't take him that long, I think it can be recommended. Now, the professional animator does exactly the same thing as Jonathan. I have about the same amount of drawings, and this is a four-second shot of a bandit laughing. It's drawn just about as roughly as Jonathan, and exactly the same principle as the flip book. Now what this is, which we've seen in a minute, this is a bandit who's been left alone in the desert, for, or left with his mates in the desert for 30 years, and they haven't seen a caravan. And when they, they suddenly remember, they find a caravan is coming, they remember that women are going to be in the caravan. So they start to laugh uncontrollably, and, uh, in sort of great pig snorts of enthusiasm, and then he goes all shy and thinks about it for a minute. So what one is doing is acting in slow motion with a pencil. So what the way I would approach a scene like this, or, or really any pro would, is you would rough out, doesn't matter how rough the drawings are, you work out the main positions. He's thinking about it, thinking about it a bit more, there might be about five positions in the scene which are crucial to tell the story. Then he gets carried away shrieking with laughter, perhaps bangs his head a couple of times, and then ends up sort of shyly thinking about it. Now, as long as you act it out, you can act it out in your head or in front of a mirror, it doesn't matter. You'd work out the timing of it. You, he would be, he's thinking about it, and then he goes, <laughs> puts his hand out here, bangs his head, laughing, gets carried away with great, <laughs> uh, and then pulls his hands up and thinks about it in a sort of a embarrassed way. So once you've got those storytelling drawings, might be four or five drawings in the scene, you would start to work doing all the in-between drawings. Now if I take where he's hitting himself here. 
if we can get the camera in on it. I will now do what is called an in-between in on talk. And one works for this sort of work on a light box or light table with light underneath the drawings. So if we darken the studio, if you can see the light shining mm. through the drawing. Now you get, you draw, you see his shoulder there. Mm -hmm. I'm putting in the drawing in between his shoulder, his, his nose, his nose. This may look very confusing, but you're very used to finding where these damn drawings are as you putting in the, put in the main points first. And in fact, instead of being 10 million drawings from his, for his hand to hit his face, to give impact, there's only one drawing in between the outside position and the actual hit, which gives impact. Now the mouth, one could even bang open larger if, if it would give more impact. This, I, it's not a mechanical job. That's the whole thing. Even the in-betweens are not mechanical. To make the damn things flow, you, you, it's just a series of breaking down your movement into tinier details. Anyway, one could go on forever. It's like one does. So that's it, basically acting in slow motion. <laughs> now, paper animation is absolutely terrific for making um, cartoon films on. And we are actually making a whole series of um, animated cartoons for the BBC Children's Television. And here I've got a, an example of Rhubarb the Dog. That's the name of the series. And I'm going to show you how we do that. We just draw this green dog like this in outline using these felt pens. And there I go, fill in his nose. See, they're absolutely terrific. You, you know, they photograph very well. It's very easy to shoot. And when I've done the whole drawing, I ink in this crazy dog, Rhubarb. Just avoiding the eye there. Now you must be careful to use the right magic markers because you don't want that black line there kind of smudging all over the place. You see the black line is not smudging. One marker goes on top of the other. That's very nice, a nice green dog. Who ever heard of a green dog? Right, well, um, now what happens when I have that drawing sort of completely colored in there, I then flick, you see, between that and that. And you do get this kind of discrepancy between the 